Great tips. And Carly, very welcome back to the show today. And staying with property, it's coming to the end of the buying season for many people who are at auctions or, or you know, <coughs> bidding on private treaty. Um, of course, there's a big psychology, isn't there, really, when it comes to bidding? We'll start off with auctions first. Okay, well, I guess... Auction, I think, is a very clean thing, uh, and I love the likes of the Allsops auctions. As a matter of fact, yesterday I had lunch with Robert Hol Hoban from Allsops to talk about the psychology behind bidding because I had a certain view, and, and he told me a few things that were pretty interesting uh, because I've always felt that the best way to deal with an auction is to sit out of the bids, see what other people are bidding, be near the back so you can see what's happening on the floor, and then when you bid, get in and bid fast because fast bids hurt other people who are bidding. Uh, but he said, you know, there's other things that you can do, and some of them I didn't even know about. He said there's a thing called a proxy bid. So you can put in a maximum price on a piece of paper. The estate agent running the auction takes over power of attorney, and they'll actually bid on your behalf. Now, you can say, geez, that takes a lot of trust, but it's a very transparent thing. So if you said my maximum price is 150000 and the bidding kind of slows down around 120, they'll hold the, the proxy in their hand. They'll say, I have 125. You bid 130, I have 135. 140, and they'll either stop and your bid will win without you even being there, or it will go beyond it, in which case your proxy is torn but up. Like you said, that takes a lot of trust. It does, because you're giving someone else power of attorney, and, and that's the thing. Like You are ultimately then signing into something which is, is a sealed and binding contract. So it would take trust even if it was uh, any other party bidding on your behalf. Sometimes people send solicitors in, you know, financial advisors, it varies. But I just think that's an interesting way of making sure you don't get caught up in it because the worst thing to do at an auction is to go beyond where you know your number is. Mm -hmm. So I actually say to people, write it in marker on the inside of your hand. What, Hopefully what, the person you're bidding against doesn't see that on the inside <laughs> of your hand, but literally it's a good reminder to say, like, that's it. If I go beyond that number, I'm in trouble. Okay, because the auctioneer's job is to get as much as they can. And they're great at out it. Out of every item. They're absolutely great at it. Like, they're, they're trained and they get momentum. And y you can tell how the momentum is going in one of two ways. If they start off and they say, you know, I see a place for 100,000, do I hear 105? If nothing happens, they'll say, do I hear 102? But then someone might say, yeah, 102. And then if bids start going quick, they they increase the amount. So it was going up by 2,500 each bid, then they'll increase it to, to 5,000. So 112, 500, do I hear 115, 115, 117, 500, do I hear 122, 500? And you're not even thinking because it's starting to move. He just went up by five grand. Like, why is that? And then as it starts to slow down, they start to bring it back down. So mm -hmm. the, again, the psychology would be that you want to stay out of building momentum because you don't want to be the bidder, you want to be the buyer. So mm -hmm. don't get involved in anything that creates momentum but at some stage you do have to get in. And while I would say don't be the first bidder, if there literally is no bids, well then do be the first bidder. But see what the momentum is like. If it's moving really fast, well then you've got to wait until it slows down and if it goes beyond where you're comfortable, then that's just too bad. If it's below where you're comfortable and it has slowed right down, bid. If someone else bids fast, and you've take got Take your time, I imagine. Actually, the reverse. Not only don't take your time, but bid fast and bid beyond what the increase is. So if they're going up by 2,500, you bid fast, and if the last bid was, say, 115, say, 120. So you actually increase. Now, that's going to cost you money, but that psychologically destroys other bidders because they're thinking, this person's coming in fast. They're coming in by more than what the auctioneer is looking for. It, 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 it ruins them in okay. their mind. Oh. And so it's, it's a good way of knocking out potential uh, higher bids. But you've always got to be aware. You don't know what money is in the room. You can always lose. So always have that mark that you say, when I hit that mark, no matter what's happening, no matter how much I envisage my life there and how much I think it's lovely and I've seen it and I told my friends, you're gone. You're getting out and you're not going forward. Okay, auctions are great in that you can see exactly who you're bidding against. And they're so, it's so transparent. I mean, that's yeah. it. You know in 10 minutes whether the house is going to be I'd love to see yours. more of them. Like, it, I, I, well, I they really are coming back, you know. They have been coming back a bit, yeah. but it's more private treaty, really, still. Yeah. And, of course, there's so many houses. As I said, the next month, the ho these houses have been closed. Tell us a bit about um, the process that you'd go to if you were bidding on a private treaty and the auctioneer is telling you there's this yeah. couple interested and this couple interested and they're trying to get you into a bidding frenzy. It, private treaty is kind of uh, like a slowed-down auction without the guarantee close. You see, private treaty, someone could list a property and list it for 10 years and never go sale agreed. Now, the estate agent probably would never stay with them that long. But I, think, I, I would prefer if everything was auctions. Because when you get into private treaty, 
the, 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 the transparency comes down, you actually don't know what you're dealing with. And while I do think that most estate agents are, are good, decent people, they can even fall afoul of people who, who mangle the system. Like, if I was selling my house, I could get my cousin to bid on that house against someone else. And then the cousin would just say, oh, I pull my offer. But really what they've done is they've still given that other person a counter offer that they might go beyond. Mm -hmm. And there's no way to stop that. We have no record, no way of enforcing arm's length, none of that stuff. So uh, while I do prefer auction, I would say that in private treaty, uh, I bid for other people quite often. And I bid on a lot of houses. And you know, this year in particular has just been a disaster. I can't seem to get deals to close at the, at the price that I think is fair. Um, and not only that, then you've got houses that are for sale, then they're not for sale, then someone else gazumps you, they disappear, you know, you make another offer, no, they, they've changed their mind, it's a mess. And not only that, then you've got houses that are for sale, then they're not for sale, then someone else gazumps you, they disappear, you know, you make another offer, no, they, they've changed their mind, it's a mess. But whatever you do, don't be the momentum builder. So the trick I would say is, tell the estate agent when you see a place that you like, I do like that property. Don't ever make an offer while you're there. You do that, then the next person who walks through the door, the estate agent says, oh, well, you know, we've got an offer of X amount. That instantly is setting the bar higher. And even if you don't buy that house, it bids up the price of property in that area. So just stay out of it. Now, you're going to have to bid eventually, but you slow the process down. Just tell the estate agent, I have the ability to close on this property. If you'd like evidence of that, I'll send it to you. So That's how many weeks problem. should you wait before you put in the offer? Let's say a house is on view three Saturdays in a row. <coughs> Usually it's the third and fourth week that they close. Is that yeah. correct? Yeah, well, so I would ask the estate agent, when is, when is the marketing time on this property over? Like, when is it likely to be in a position that, that the vendor or the seller will be willing to go sale agreed? They might say, well, it's a receivership sale. We have a mandatory four-week marketing time. Mm -hmm. If that's the case, why would you be making a bid in the first week? Stay out of it, because all you're going to do is potentially bid yourself up or it only takes one counter offer and then you've got to beat that to, to close. So just stay out of it. Always try to make the last bid and make your bid strong. Um, and it's hard to get right and you can miss out on places that you want, but I still think it's better than paying beyond what something is, okay. is worth. And that's what the, the, the trick on the valuations there was about. Well, the point is, if you miss out on the place that you're chasing, you could also, like you just said at the top of that, um, if another property in the area comes up, you, you're starting at that last price. Precisely, rather than something that was, was much higher if you, yeah. if you helped to, to bid up the prices. Because it, the estate agents all know what properties close for. And we've got the property price register, which records it as well. And so what you'll see, for instance, and you see it in, in Dublin, it's not really something that has been happening elsewhere, that certain neighbourhoods, you know, you, you've got an asking price, and it goes far beyond that. Well, the next time someone lists a property, they don't start at the old asking price. Yes. They start at, at close to what the last one actually was, was, was sold for. And sometimes they, they, if they do it a bit lower, it's to make sure that they get a lot of viewings. Because when you get 40, 50 viewings and you don't have experienced buyers in there, they're the ones that, like idiots, you know, straight in. The second they walk through the door, yeah, here's an offer, next offer. And that absolutely plays into the hands of the estate agent. So what you need to do is let them know that you're a real buyer, a genuine one, that you have the ability to close, but make sure you don't go fast. Slow the process down, but not to the point so where you're say you're interested, but out. don't make a financial offer. Yeah. And remember, they are not your friends. <laughs> they are not <laughs> acting for you. <laughs> they don't care about you. They're just playing you. Yeah, I mean, that is, is kind of, I don't like saying that maybe publicly, but that is true. The, the, the agent's actual client is the seller. Mm -hmm. And their job is to get the seller the maximum amount of money that they can. Now, they're not going to go to the ends of the earth to get the seller an extra two or 3,000 because that's worth about 20 or 30 euro to them. So what happens for an estate agent that is best is a property gets bid up and closed fast. Mm -hmm. That's the ideal scenario. What you want to do is not create that ide ideal scenario because your ideal scenario is that the property doesn't get bid up and closed super fast. You, you might want to close it super fast, but you'll only do that if you have an idea of when the end is in sight. So again, slow that process down and say, yeah, I am interested. That offer that you have, I'd probably come back stronger than that. You know, I'm not saying how much right now. I want to talk to my architect. I need to speak to my, my partner. Mm -hmm. Whatever excuse you want, just play them off until a bit of time goes by and say, but please do keep me in the loop. Please don't go sale agreed until such time as I'm in it. And if they say, oh, well, you know, th they, they try to trick you to say, well, you know, if it goes sale agreed, I, I, want my, I might not have time to tell you. Say, well, if you're that busy, 
then I don't know if I can if I can deal with you anyway because you know I'm busy too. Okay. Uh, so and play I, the game. Yeah, just you've got to learn how to play the game and, and play it to your advantage, not to theirs. Okay. okay. Carl, thanks so much. Great advice. Thanks, Mel. Now coming up after the break, who said heavy lifting wasn't for women?